And finally, to games or interactivity. There's a consideration here in that artists have been using games for a very long time, and uh, games and game metaphors. And there's a big difference between using the metaphor of game and using a game itself. Um, and I want to, I mean, I really want to be clear about that because if we're looking at a game, we're looking at something that is playable, something that has a specific sort of entertainment value to it, that has uh, specific qualities to it. And we'll talk about those a little bit later. If we're talking about using game metaphors or game pieces of games, then we're talking about making references to them. Uh, we're talking about like the art that's embedded in games. We're talking about perhaps the assets, individual assets or the pieces of a game being art. Um, but perhaps then we're not talking about the game itself being art. The first one that I want to look at is uh, Mario Clouds, Super Mario Clouds by Cory Archangel. And this is a really beautiful sort of lyric piece, even in its simplicity. Um, the clouds are taken or appropriated directly out of Super Mario Brothers, and everything else is removed. Now, there's a history of working with clouds and working with nature and the landscape in painting, and this piece makes beautiful references to it. But in addition to that, this piece is also about sort of the physicality of it, in that this artwork is created as a cartridge that can then be played on the Nintendo system. And the, each individual cartridge is then signed and, um, and made an individual work of art. Looking at games, we're sort of still faced with a this and that, in that it's easy to take something like a game like uh, Pac Mondrian and use, uh, or Pac Man in this case, and layer over top of it uh, contemporary art and create uh, an art space around it. I want to show you a couple of quick videos and outtakes from games. Uh, this, uh, this first one is from Braid, which creates a, an interesting means of telling the story and an interesting means of like creating um, emotional context and questioning like our understanding of time and uh, regret through the game. And the, one of the key features is that the player can reverse time and undo what they've done. So in this case, the player then is able to undo a mistake that would lead to their death. But the question is then, well, what happens then to the people that get encountered? What happens to uh, their understanding if they're able to sort of rewind? The last piece that I want to show you is, uh, is called Passage. It's by Jason Rohrer. And it is a, just a beautiful like poem about life. And the game itself takes all of five minutes to play and is very simple. And I've uh, seen very old people playing the game and very young people playing the game. It's very accessible to everyone. Um, in conclusion, I want to say that, uh, I want to point out that interactivity is one of the key features in games, <laughs> that there has to be some sort of feedback loop involved in it. And, but even without that, even with just looking at the sort of the, the pieces or the constructs of games, it's possible to create compelling art.